Hello guys and girls and welcome back to another episode of Galactic Crowd Tutorial. I know it's been a little bit of a while since I've done one of these between being sick and being at work. Um, I've had very limited time to make videos. I've barely just about been getting a video a day out. Um, and most of it is pre-recorded, thankfully. Uh, so I've been struggling a little bit, but nonetheless, I'm back on it now. I spent a load of time putting a load of stuff together for you guys. So we should have a good four or five episodes here. Um, all set out, pre-planned and ready for you guys. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to jump into it today. In the last episode of my tutorial series, I showed you guys uh, the dungeons and the mob boss how to kill it, etc, uh, etc, et um, and basically what you get at the end of it and how everything works that way. So by now you guys should have your schematics, which should be your, um, should have had these pre-planned on me, but we're going to skip across to the bottom here. Uh, you should have your moon buggy and your tier 2 rocket. You should have both these schematics from various dungeons, and the you guys are now probably wondering how you're going to build them, how you're going to work them, etc, etc, etc. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get yourself a NASA workbench. Uh, you're going to need one of these available, whether it be on the overworld or your space station, which I will get around to showing you guys how to build. Um, that will come in a while though. I'm probably going to go through all the planets before I show you guys the space station. Um, but yeah, so you're going to need to get yourself a NASA workbench. These things are fairly simple to make. Let's just quickly grab one of them. I'll show you how it's done. Just like this. I've showed you guys before, I believe, in episode 2, episode 3. Episode 3, I think it was, that I showed you guys how to do this. Uh, it's four compressed steel, advanced wafer, two levers, redstone torch, and a crafting table. Uh, so they're fairly simple to make. You probably make these up on the moon if you bring your resources up with you. Um... But yeah, so you need to make one of these bad boys and basically all you're going to do is you have this uh, interface here, of course, where we made the tier 1 rocket. You also have this button down here, which is all say next and back. This will basically take you through. If you go to the end, I've already unlocked these because I did videos and I wasn't happy with them. And I just, you know, you guys deserve the best. So I've gone back and decided to start them again. Uh, so basically all you do is you go next all the way to the end and it will say add new schematic. You basically take what you got, place it in here and click unlock schematic and do the same with that one. And then it will unlock these two here. So your moon buggy and your tier two rocket. Uh, so we're going to start off with the moon buggy. We'll start off with the moon buggy. Um, there's going to be a couple of various items that we haven't used before yet. And we're going to show you guys how to make them right now. And going to get you guys set up with your very own moon buggy it's a very very cool little thing um, but if you have a look here first of all I'm going to show you this this is optional you don't have to have this to complete the moon buggy but I prefer to have uh, maximum storage so like your rockets where you can put chest you have to you can do the same thing except you have to make these buggy storage boxes there can uh, the recipe contains a chest but it also contains three compressed steel and two compressed iron and that'll give you one buggy storage box you need 18 and six all together and six six three chests and that'll give you your three storage modules that you need uh, to max the storage out on the buggy second thing you're going to need is um the buggy seat which is just five compressed steel and one iron you only need one of them so that's not too bad at all to make and then obviously you're going to need wheels because a buggy has wheels and you need to make wheels. Uh, so these are also fairly simple to make. A piece of compressed steel and three piece, uh, four pieces of leather. God damn it, I cannot count. Uh, so you need to make four of these. So you're going to need 16 leather in total and four compressed steel. That's all you need to do extra to make your buggy. And of course you're also going to need yourself 11 heavy duty plates the tier one ones that we made for our tier one rocket if you can't remember how to make them it's simple it's just like this two compressed steel two aluminium and two bronze will give you one tier one plate uh, so it's quite resource heavy but these things are so fun to ride around in uh, i'll show you guys that in a minute so we're going to grab all of our bits and pieces here and if you come over to your uh, NASA workbench and you just go to the schematic that you're looking for. So we're trying to build a moon buggy. So we're going to come across the moon buggy here. And then basically if you shift click as well, it'll put everything where it needs to be. So you shift click that, it'll put it exactly where it needs to be. Uh, if you see the recipe here, it will show you the recipe there. 
and you can just shift click it and it'll put everything in its respective place. Shift click all of them in and there's your buggy with a storage base of 54. Fantastic, now we can go drive around on the moon uh, like little kids. Uh, so obviously this thing is gonna require fuel just like our rockets do, uh, except you can use the rocket launch pad to fuel them like we do the rockets. You have to make this thing called a buggy fueling pad. Quickly show you guys how to make one of them uh, it's fairly fairly simple it's pretty similar to the rocket launch pad instead of iron on the top though we're going to be using compressed steel and then obviously your iron blocks so it's going to be a little bit resource heavy there but it's not too bad at all once you get one of these that's pretty much all you need unless you want fueling stations off elsewhere it's basically all you have to do now is grab your buggy right click it on your buggy fueling pad we'll chuck that one away and we can right click ourselves into this and if you push your inventory button it will say down here whatever you've got it assigned to so mine's period so open that it will show me inventory and fuel i can pop a ton of stuff in here because we got all that storage space pew, pew. and as you'll see the fuel is loading because i have a fuel loader over here which is full of Full of fuel so you can have like a fuel system set up and it's basically just the same as the rocket launch pad and this thing will allow you to drive around on the surface of the moon it'll also work on mars definitely not advisable on the asteroids because obviously you're going from asteroid to asteroid you're not going to be flying unless they add that that'd be so cool but this thing is awesome look i mean look you can go up here you just be like boop takes a little bit to get up there but it has no problem getting up there whatsoever so it's a very very nice way to drive around the moon uh to get to places and obviously you got the storage you can go around and get all your meteoric iron and store it all in your buggy everything is fun and fantastic this even goes up two high blocks i found out pretty cool stuff so then we just park the buggy back up on there right click to dismount or shift or shift it's up to you shift will put you back and uh It'll put you back in third person view though, and I just prefer to right click to get off. Uh, so that's pretty much your moon buggy. Uh, you got to keep it fueled. It doesn't run out of fuel too quickly. You can get quite far. So if you have something like maybe a thousand blocks away, you'd probably be able to reach it in the moon buggy. I'm not too sure the distance it can travel before it runs out. Uh, but you guys can go play around, test it with yourselves and find out how far you can get. Just make sure you carry a fuel loader, some fuel, coal generator and some coal and maybe some wire if you really want to. Um, some launch and some buggy pads just in case uh, but yeah so that's pretty much a moon buggy it's a really nifty little thing uh, you use it on Mars as well no problems whatsoever I think you can anyway I'm pretty sure you there's no reason you can I'm pretty sure you can even use that on the overworld I'm gonna actually test that on my um mod source world and see if I can have my pimping right outside my house it looked pretty swag um, but yeah, so that is the moon buggy. That is pretty much all you need to know for the moon buggy um, The next thing you probably want to know is how to build your tier 2 rocket and exactly what's gonna happen Or what is exactly gonna do for you. Uh, so this thing is nifty It takes a little bit more resources than the tier 1 obviously you see the tier 1 here took some tier 1 plates some rocket fins uh, rocket engine and a nose cone this however and it only takes eight plates this however you can see takes 10 it's also got an additional slot on the fin sides here which i'll show you what goes there in a second and then obviously you got your nose and your um rocket engine um so let's just quickly get up let's get it up where is it where is it where is it tier two rocket i'm gonna put one of these in my inventory so i can look at zero recipe so there we go, there is the recipe for this one. So as you can see, a couple of things are different on it. Pretty much like your tier one, you got your rocket fin, standard, standard rocket engine, your standard nose cone. The additional things that you're gonna need are these rocket boosters, which simply go on top of the fins in this additional slot that we didn't have in the tier one thing. It also takes 10 plates instead of Eight, and it will also require tier 2 heavy duty plates instead of the tier 1 ones we used the first time around. These things are a little bit of, little bit expensive to make. Um, it's just going to require a little bit of grinding. But if you sit here on the moon base and you're building your base, you will get a ton of meteoric iron. I'm not even kidding you. Like you got one there and... 
I got some like here and I got some there and I've got I've literally just got it everywhere it's like some there um, so if you spend the while in space you'll have tons of it fall around you there and there and there there's another moon buggy that we had earlier and I crashed it uh, I didn't crash it it's basically just glitching out well let me break it um, but yes so if you sit around here building your base, you're going to have tons of this stuff around. Put it in your electric arc furnace and it will give you two ingots for every one raw meteoric iron you put in there. So if you've got like 10 around your base, that's 20 ingots basically, which will give you 20 plates. You only need 10 meteoric iron plates for um, for the rocket build itself to make these. Uh, so we're going to start off quickly with the boosters. Fairly simple things to make. Um, you're going to need another 8 meteoric iron just to make these things um and you have to compress them down it only takes one to compress these as well so it's not too bad it's not too like everything else um you need your oxygen vent which i've showed you guys in episode two uh, it's just some compressed tin and some compressed steel not too bad to make you need two of them as well and you need two field fuel canisters uh, it can't be half full or empty it's got to be full otherwise i don't think it works nope doesn't work so it's got to be full and then last but not least it has to be yellow wool it cannot be other, any other color has to be yellow it's a shaped craft in recipe and there's no other way to make it um so yeah you're gonna need to make two of these and obviously you're gonna need two tier one plates as well down here uh nothing too bad at all a little bit grindy but obviously if you hang around here for a while you'll have plenty of resources uh so additional from that you've also got to make these tier two plates uh, so obviously you're going to make your compressed meteoric iron. I did have some stuff in here showing you guys how it went down. So you just stick that in there like so. And it's going to make your plates. And it's going to compress them down. And then once you come down here, you're going to be like taking this stuff and aluminium. Aluminium goes in the middle. Steel goes there. And copper goes there. There you go. Just like so. And it's going to compress that down into heavy duty plates. And then once you have these, and you have both of these, so I'm going to take a couple of them, I'm going to take a couple of them. You basically come down to another compressor, you put your meteoric iron compressed plates, and your heavy duty tier 1 plates in there as well, and it will compress these down into a tier 2 plate. So it will compress them together. So they're a little bit expensive, but trust me, when you get into the next part, the tier 3 rockets, you'll see how inexpensive these things actually are. So we're going to need a total of... 10 of them you're going to need your standard rocket fins which i showed you guys in episode three if you've got this far you know how to make rocket fins you know how to make a rocket engine and you know how to make a nose cone and you know about the additional chest i assume uh, so the only new things are the boosters and the heavy duty plates so you grab your standard fins engine and your nose cone and we're going to grab the additional chest because we can shift click Shift. Okay, the shift click doesn't want to work on this one. Oh, that's because I'm on the tier one rocket. Okay, so go next and then go next to your tier two rocket. Then you can shift click everything in there, like so. And ta da, you now have a tier two rocket with a storage space of 56. Absolutely fantastic. Then so we can drop that one in there. And I want to show you guys the difference in these as well because these things are freaking cool. Let's just grab that. Um, let's go boop, 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 boop. right so we're gonna put the tier one one here and then we're gonna put the tier two one here look at the size difference it's so much bigger ta-da but yeah so the tier, tier two is absolutely so much bigger it will consume it obviously i'm in creative so it's not going to do so um but yeah then you just chuck that onto your go away as well you chuck that onto your launch pad with your bit of fuel and it'll load up your fuel for you. I'm not sure how much this takes, uh, but I think it takes probably like 3,000. I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. Uh, it doesn't cost that much to fly to the thing though. So that is all you need for your um, schematics. This is what you can make. You can make yourself a little, little um, pimping wagon to drive around the moon. And collect things and whatever. Find your dungeons easier. Find your dungeons easier. Well, you found the dungeons if you've already got this. So that makes no sense. Um, but once you get to Mars, you'll have the schematic. You can drive around Mars and find your dungeons easier. So there you go. And you'll probably use it in the overworld. So we'll give that a go at some point and see if you can or not. Um, 
So one thing before you go to Mars is you've got to take note of this is it's very very cold on Mars. Um, obviously, it's very it's much further away from the sun than the overworld and the moon is. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit chillier. Uh, that's where this stuff comes into. This is called uh, thermal padding. Um, this is basically created in your normal armor recipes like so. Uh, but it does require this stuff called thermal cloth. This stuff isn't too bad to make. You're going to need a total of, I think it's 24 that I added it up to. Honestly can't remember. It's roughly about there, 20 something. Um, basically all you need is four pieces of wool. Does not matter what color they are. It does not matter. They don't have to match either. You can have pink, white, green and purple and a as long as there's a piece of redstone in the middle, it will make this thermal cloth. Uh, so you're going to need like pff, a whole stack and a half, maybe two stacks of wool and pff, half a stack of redstone. Let's just lay that on the safe side and then make yourself a ton of this thermal stuff. And this is, we're going to just pull all of this out. Everyone knows how to make your standard armor recipes. And then all you're going to go is you go into your... Galacticraft tab thing that you have here and you've got a section down here with armor pieces uh, This is where your thermal padding goes. I was wondering what it was at the beginning as well uh, You can place all your thermal padding in there and it does change color as well. It's so freaking cool. Look at this Look at me glowing different colors and stuff. It's really really cool. It's funky I don't like how it goes orange and green, uh, but it is pretty nifty none to say the least um, No, nope, did not want to do that Let's put our armor back on. Cool. Uh, so that's pretty much all that you guys need to know about going to the next level, which is going to be Mars. Um, so you got your thermal stuff. I've showed you how to make the tier 2 rockets. I've shown you guys how to make the buggy. And once we get into Mars, there's going to be some pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, there's some more materials, which is going to allow us to make even more stuff, which is really, really cool and very, very useful. And it's just... It's just such a fun mod to play with once you get further and further. And I cannot wait for this get to be developed further. As I've said a couple times in the past. It's going to be such an amazing mod pack when it's finished. And it's got so much potential to it. Um, but that is going to be it for this episode. So we're going to sit on our little rocket here. And we're going to be like, hey, hey. There we go. There's my little face. Hey, guys. I'm in a rocket. But yes, this is where I'm going to leave you. Um... And then the next episode, we're going to launch off to Mars and you can see how we enter the atmosphere. Every different planet and zone is different to how you enter the atmosphere. It's quite funky and you're going to see in the, the very next episode. Um, but yeah, I've got everything planned and set up on Mars so we can just jump straight over there and get straight into another episode. And everything is set up. I'm planned. I'm pre-planned. I'm pre Everything. Everything is ready. Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, but thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. And I hope you guys have found it useful. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Falling slowly.